G'day, I'm Paul and I am seriously excited to drive that car behind me. It's the new Mercedes AMG A45S. On paper, it has some incredible stats and I want to see if that engine lives up to its name. It's the most powerful four-cylinder production engine ever put into a road car. This here is the Edition 1, so the pricing kicks off from just over $93,000 for the A45S. Edition 1 is about $8,000 extra. Today we're going to do a detailed review plus a drag race against the cheaper A35. Now, if you do want to skip ahead to other parts, of this review use the time codes up there or if you're on youtube just scroll down to the description where you'll see the links i'd also love it if you could hit subscribe and also press the bell icon that's going to notify you every single time we publish a new car review let's talk exterior now up until recently all taxis in melbourne were this color yellow but mercedes-benz calls it sun yellow and i think it actually works well here on the a45 we're going to start here with the bonnet have a look at this this has what they call a power bump so it's like a little bit of a hump there this signifies the amg model but down here something new for the a45 is the pan americana grill that's a 12 slat grill you're going to find on cars like the amg gt and i think it really makes this car stand out because it looks different to the a35 which sits beneath this and then of course you've got this whopping big logo there that works for things like radar and safety systems neatly tucked away in here is an extra radiator you'll see on the other side it's a blank but here we have an additional radiator for that whopping big four-cylinder engine and then you have all of the body kit that wraps around here this section here is for the aero package you can get this without the aero package so that gives you a more executive look I think the aero package looks pretty cool though because if you're spending this kind of coin on the car you want everyone to know exactly what it is these headlights are also standard these are multi beam LEDs. It also does the shutoff sequence where effectively if you've got a car in front of you it's able to have high beams running around it and also dipping for approaching traffic so it's quite a clever system it works really well and it's good to see them fitting it as standard equipment to this car. You know what I'm not a fan of this though the poor paint finish in that section up there not really a good look on such an expensive car. Now, have a look at this section right here. This is the flared wheel arch, and if you have a look at that from dead on, you can see that it's got a bit of a haunch to it. The track of this car is actually 24 millimeters wider. The wheel arches are 27 millimeters wider each side. So when this is following you in traffic, you're going to notice it standing out. And then under here, we have the matte black wheels that come standard with the Edition 1 package with these whopper big brakes. Six piston calipers and also 360 millimeter rotor. They are seriously big size. Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, 245 mil wide all round as well have a look at this you have the addition one decals kind of looks nice shows people how much extra money you're spending and then around the back here is where the rest of the aero package sits so you've got this boot spoiler here now this is a little bit flimsy you'll notice when you actually close the boot but it sort of moves around a little bit so not really liking the look of that. Uh, these exhaust pipes are 90 millimeters in diameter, so the A45S comes standard with four of them. They're fake though, which is a bit disappointing. And then the diffuser that sits down the bottom here, so it is a really good setup. Let's talk about interior styling. You're buying a Mercedes-Benz, that means it needs to be premium, and they have absolutely nailed it here with the A-Class. The A-Class came out in Australia standard with these 10.25-inch screens across the entire range. When you step up to the AMG model, though, they've really thrown the style book at it. I love the fact that with the Edition 1, you're getting all of these extra sort of graphic highlights. You're getting the yellow stitching, the wicked-looking sports performance seats. You're getting this awesome steering wheel with this Alcantara-esque material on it and then the edition one also gets edition here under amg flat bottom there and you have these cool lcd screens on either side of the wheel i'm going to go through those a little bit later on when we go for a drive but this is kind of what sets this car apart from the rest of the competitors in this segment but how premium is that dashboard let's get our hardness tester out this is our durometer it measures a hardness score from zero to 100 where zero is soft and 100 is super hard I want to test out on that dashboard there. I'm going to do both tiers plus the center console lid. Pop that down there. That's a 70. That's pretty good. And we'll go to the lower tier now. Just under 70 there as well. What about the center console lid? Let's give that a shot. About 40. That is fantastic. So yes, you are getting a premium interior for the kind of money that you're spending for this car. Let's talk infotainment. This is what really has me excited because I'm a bit of a tech buff and the Mercedes-Benz system really sits at the top of the tier now in terms of functionality, usability and features. The old command system was absolutely rubbish. I know a lot of people say they got used to it once they owned the car, but every single time I drove a Mercedes, I just found it really confusing. Nested menus and it was just really all over the place. So today I'm going to walk you through the new MBUX. It's called the Mercedes 
is Ben's user experience. And it all centers around these two 10.25 inch screens. We're gonna focus on this one here. It's a touch screen, so you can use the touch functions to navigate through the screen. And then you can also set different themes as well if you want. So you can go from the fancy theme to an old school theme, which changes everything, including your gauges. But for me, I like just sticking with the standard themes. You can also then navigate the infotainment system down here. You've got a touchpad, which allows you to swipe left and right, allows you to click and also write when you're putting in navigation destinations, which I'll show you in a second. You have shortcut buttons to the side. This top one here activates a 360 camera. That actually works really well. It's a very detailed camera and it gives you a stack of different angles to work with. So very intuitive system and a good implementation. If you've seen our other videos before, I'll often complain about low quality 360 cameras. This is how they need to be done so you can actually use them. You then have a shortcut button on the side for access to the car's settings. Underneath that, you have a favorites button. You can set up anything you want in here. And then every time you hit that, you'll be able to quickly dive into those menus. And then finally, on the other side, you have access to telephone, radio, and maps as well. So let's jump into the telephone menu. I'll show you what that looks like. So in the phone menu, you can connect directly via Bluetooth, then use voice recognition to give commands to the car, or you can hook up Apple CarPlay. Oh, it looks a bit nasty. So it's not a widescreen Apple CarPlay system by the looks of it. It's sort of boxed into that window there. I guess it kind of gives them room for you to access other functions, but in some of the competitors in this segment, including BMW, it's actually full widescreen. If we then jump back to the main menu, you have your radio functions. Now in here, you can select FM, AM, DAB plus digital. It is an okay system. The only issue I have is when you're looking for radio stations, you kind of have to scroll through an infinite amount of radio stations. It's not a really quick system. You do have access to a search function, a bit hard to use while you're moving, and then also a list function. But again, they're all big icons, and it means that when you're searching, you have to flick through quite a lot of stations before you can actually find what you're after. Now, in terms of media connectivity, you have USB-C ports littered throughout the car. So that's the next generation of USB. You can get a converter like the one that we're using here. You also have built-in media storage and the ability to stream over Bluetooth and also internet streaming as well through your phone, which is handy to have. Now, in the comfort menu, this is where all the climate control functions are and also where you can go through the energizing modes. Now, the drive out to here was about an hour and a half and the car prompted me to use the energizing comfort mode and when I pressed vitality it went through a 10 minute selection of nice music and also the ability for the seat to move around and make it more comfortable for me so that is a nice thing to have and refresh which was interesting it would basically make it out like you're at sea and then start blowing cold air at you ambient lighting you can select from up to 64 LED colors inside the cabin here everything from standard hues through to mixes as well now specific to the AMG models it is optional on the A35 AMG but standard on the A45 is track pace is effectively an ability for you to enter track details into the car. Some are also preloaded and it gives you metrics from up to 60 or 80 different data points on the car and you can download that information to see how you're doing as a driver. It'll collect everything from engine revs to braking performance. It really is a useful tool to have if you do plan on attacking track days. Jump along there to the AMG performance menu. This is where you're going to see a lot of data on the car. So the engine menu gives you the power output, engine torque as well, plus all your vital temperatures. You have a consumption menu, who really cares? You've then got options for the vehicle. And in here, you also have a G meter, which you can get to display on the menu in front of you, along with slip angles and what the suspension is doing on each corner of the car. Now, the individual configuration is pretty handy because if you want to have the car loud, but not have the suspension too firm, you can simply set up the individual menu to make the engine go into its dynamic mode, but to keep the suspension in comfort mode. And that's what I've got it in at the moment. That way, when you're driving, you wanna have a bit of fun. You can flick this along once. It dials up individual mode and then away you go. The next function I want to walk you through here is Mercedes Me. Mercedes Me is the Mercedes application. It's installed on your telephone. And if I open it up here, it allows me to dial up information about the car, remotely start it, see the status of the car, remotely locate it, send map information to the car. And it's very easy to set up. You log into the portal, put your VIN information in, confirm it through the dealer. The other element of this system is the voice recognition system. It actually works really well here. It's activated by saying, hey Mercedes, but I've disabled that because every time we say Mercedes during this video, it tries to activate it. So I'm gonna push it here. Close the roller sunblind. I'm closing the roller sunblinds. So you can see that working there. Uh, but the other cool function is you can change LED interior colors while you're driving. Change the interior LED color to red. Could you repeat your input, please? Change LED color to red. Okay, I'm changing the color. 
Look, it, it generally works pretty well. Uh, sometimes it won't pick up your commands, but it is a useful system to have, especially if you need to put in navigation addresses or call people with weird names. The navigation menu is a big step forward now as well because it's a much faster system and much easier to use as well. So you can see here the processor is super quick. You can see the traffic overlays on major roads as well. The input functions for destinations are really clever now too. Over on the side here, you can go straight to parking lots, to meals, and then if I click here, you can type in destinations. You can write them in using the top of the pad here. But the interesting function I find here is the ability to say, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Take me to a Chinese restaurant. So what it's doing now is looking up Chinese restaurants nearby. And if I want to go to Heathcote Palace Chinese restaurant, all I do is click that button up the top there. So it is a good integration of navigation into that voice recognition system. Finally, let's have a look at the settings menu. What I like here is that there are graphical highlights for all the functions here. So as I scroll through these, it changes the overlay to tell me which setting I'm actually changing. So this is a clever feature because sometimes you don't know what these symbols mean. If I jump over to the assistance menu, it then goes even further there. And I like the fact that you can actually pick up some of the traffic signs here as well. You can customize a lot of the safety systems built into this car and vary the amount of intervention you're getting. So if you don't like the way that it tugs at the wheel when you're leaving a lane or the way that it tries to, to avoid leaving a lane when you don't want it to, you can switch all of those systems off in a very intuitive way. And finally, the good thing here as well is the owner's manual. It's all a graphical representation. So built into the car, you can come in and find all the functions and figure out what to do with them because there is so much to learn here. So I'll give you a quick look at this. If I go here to tips at the filling station, refueling the vehicle, it will give me a, a lot of warnings because it's German about uh, refueling your vehicle. But then it also gives you quick start guides for things like adjusting the mirrors and, and other critical functions to being able to hit the road and enjoy your new AMG. Enough about infotainment. Let's have a look at what you're actually getting with this car. Dual zone climate control, you're getting these as well. I love the way they're designed. They really stand out. You can open and close them just by twisting them. And then they have LED elements inside them. So whichever color you pick for the cabin, it's going to light up around there as well. Down here, you have wireless phone charging. So you just slide your phone into there. It fits my big phone as well, which is really good. You've also got a Burmester sound system. Now, what about safety? AEB that works up to high speed. So that's over 200 kilometers an hour. It'll detect pedestrians. This is the duck's nuts of AEB systems. So if you are conscious about safety, this is going to have you fully covered. A very nice looking sunroof there that you can look out of. Let's talk about practicality and comfort. Where are you going to put your things? Well, we know that your smartphone can be wirelessly charged. So that tucks in under there. But what if you want to put it somewhere else? Well, it doesn't really fit anywhere else. It kind of just gets wedged in there. It's not really a comfortable fit. What about bottles? Fits in there nicely. That's no drama. And then in the door, you also have bottle storage. You then have a center console here. That's nice and deep, which is good. Another two USB-C outlets there as well. And then a decent sized glove box where you can put little bits and pieces. And in terms of comfort, it was about a one hour, 45 minute drive to get here this morning. And it is comfortable, but the seats are pretty hard. Keep in mind that the Edition 1 gets the performance seat, so this is the duck's nuts of seats, so to speak. Thankfully, the ride is pretty good, so it makes up for it, but the seats are just a little bit too firm. And in terms of the driving position, it's pretty good. The steering wheel is the perfect size. There's plenty of room to rotate it. You've got easy access to the pedals, and all of your critical functions are easy to get to as well. So from a driving perspective, this is a good place to be seated. So we're in the second row, and have you noticed how dark it is in here? Let me flick our light on. That's because privacy glass is standard, so that really chills out the cabin and makes it a private enclave. What about legroom? It's actually not terrible. The last time I was in the back of an A-Class, I could barely fit in here. So this is a sporty, sporty performance seat. Normally with those, it means you have no legroom here for adults, but I've got pretty decent knee room. There isn't a great deal of toe room though. That's the only drama. And I have noticed as well, there's actually no grab handles anywhere in this car. So. If you're going on a fast drive, your front's just going to have to hold on to their seatbelts. Now, what about the rest of this setup here? You've got two air vents, and then in this slot right here, you've got storage for coins and things, but another two USB-C outlets. Over here, we have a center armrest that pops out. Let's see if it fits our bottles. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. It's actually got a retractable arm on it, which is great. And then in the door, you can fit another bottle in there. We'll tuck these away. This is a 40-20-40 split folding seat. So I'll show you how that works in a second. I also fix on the two outboard seats. And then you'll notice here on the seats, they get that yellow stitching. It gives that cabin the sporty feel. 
and then LED reading lights above your head as well. Let's talk cargo space. So yes, it's not a GLS, but it still has a pretty decent cargo arrangement. So you have 370 litres of cargo capacity available here. And then off to the sides, you have storage for your reflective vests because it is a German car and you need to have that stuff. And then another nook on the side for your odds and ends. And then under here, let me show you what is under here because this is a pretty cool setup. The Burmester sound system is backed up by a decent sized subwoofer that sits in here where a spare tire would normally be. Instead, you have a goo kit plus a compressor as well, so that will fill a hole in the tire should it happen. And then off to the side, you have an amplifier as well. So it is a pretty compact space under there, but it gives us a bit more boot room. Let's see how we go fitting everything in. Pop our laptop bag to the side. Now, big suitcase. Oh, that is heavy. That fits beautifully like that. Now, the seats fold in a 40, 20, 40 split folding fashion. I'll show you what that looks like. This comes off fairly easily. Now, all you do is give that a flick. You can see the 20 there and the 40 there. And then this side as well. And that then expands to 1,210 litres of cargo space. As an engineer, I'm going to nerd out on you because I find this kind of stuff really fascinating. What Mercedes-Benz has done is move this engine completely. So they've spun it 180 degrees. The turbos used to be down the front here, but now they're all the way around the back. You also get this cool badge, hand-built by David Hoffman. Good German sounding bloke. Strut tower brace up the back there. The turbocharger is interesting because it's a twin scroll unit. Uses roller bearings. It has an electric wastegate instead of a pneumatic one. Other cars that have that at the moment are the 992 911. That turbocharger winds up to 2.1 bar of boost. That's over 30 PSI. That is seriously insane. It'll do 169,000 RPM. I mean, the numbers are just crazy. And that is what you need to make the world's most powerful four cylinder production engine. Now, it is worth pointing out that the Australian A45 doesn't get a petrol particulate filter. What is a particulate filter? Well, it traps particulates from the exhaust, and then when it's full, it increases the exhaust temperature to burn them off. They're pretty common in diesels. That should mean that we get a freer flowing exhaust with more sound and perhaps a little bit more power. Now, I've got my colleague Scott here to give me a hand with some exhaust revving. Scott, fire it up. Quite. Like it is louder, but it's not cracking and popping like I was expecting it to. There is one secret here though, and it's called a motion start. So when you're turning the car on, you hold one of the paddles and then switch it on and it makes this sound here. Does a little bit of a burble. So if you're in an underground car park, at least people are gonna hear that you're driving the 45S. Under the bonnet, 310 kilowatts of power, 500 newton meters of torque that is some serious business one thing they've talked about a lot is the improvement in turbocharging there is virtually no turbo lag so even in comfort mode when you lean on the throttle it picks up beautifully and just takes away there's just no waiting for anything it doesn't actually feel like a turbocharged car it feels like it's got itself a supercharger under the bonnet there and it's really just delivering everything you need as soon as you get on the throttle it's made into an eight speed dual clutch transmission. The A35 uses a seven speed automatic and it's good for a zero to 100 run in 3.9 seconds. Now, how quick is that? Earlier today, we had the chance to do a drag race and also test those figures at a drag strip. And we also reeled in the A35, which sits beneath this to give you an idea of just how much quicker this is. And here is Igor's quick transition swipe. Okay, it is time for us to drag race the A45S against the A35. I'm pretty confident this one is going to win, but uh, I could stand corrected, so we'll see how we go. So in the car next to me, I have Scott, my colleague. He's going to jet off at the same time. We're gonna use launch control in both cars, and we're gonna go over a quarter mile. And then Eagle, the video man, is gonna stop it at 100 k's an hour so you can see which one is quicker at that point. And then once again, we will reconvene at the end of the quarter mile and we'll see what happens. You ready, Scott? Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> this thing is unbelievably quick. Okay, we're about halfway through, 160 k's an hour, 170, and bang, there's the quarter mile. Oh man, this thing is absolutely astonishingly quick. Okay, 12.2 second quarter mile at 185.9 k's an hour. Scott, how'd you go? What was your quarter mile time? That was a 13.3 at 160. 
88.8 k's an hour. Okay, so this is over a second quicker over the quarter mile, which is bloody impressive. And then zero to 100 in four seconds dead flat. That is some seriously impressive stuff from this car. I love the way it hooks up and then the way it scrambles to get going. It is an absolute missile. Surprisingly, when the A45S is in comfort mode, the ride is incredibly soft. You can really just cruise along and it's nowhere near as firm as I thought it was going to be. They've worked on refining it. The last one was back jarring. It would dislocate your back if you hit a bump regardless of which drive mode it's in. So they've certainly taken on that feedback and made this a much more pleasurable driving experience in comfort mode. Now, Eagle has just told me that he can barely hear my audio and that is because there is so much drone in this cabin. The tyres are picking up everything. We're only doing 100 kilometres an hour on a course chip road here in the country and I can barely hear anything and I'm having to yell to get everything across to you. I spent an hour and a half in the car this morning doing the exact same thing so it just isn't very pleasant that the tyres are really transmitting so much noise into this cabin. Visibility out of the car is good. I can see clearly out the front there. At the back isn't fantastic. It's quite a narrow window especially if you've got passengers it's going to make it a little harder to see out of. The wing mirrors are also really small as well so you're not really getting much visibility out the side but it does have blind spot monitoring and you have a lane keeping assistant as well most of that stuff works fairly well so when you're done with all the boring driving you flick this little knob around to sport plus immediately the adaptive dampers firm up and you know that the car means business because it's much louder out of the rear as well let's roll onto the throttle here and dial into the and it has got some serious barks out of that exhaust as well oh my god the way this piles on speed is ridiculous there is just no turbo lag there and despite everyone saying that it's much quieter from in here it is making an absolute hell of a racket out of that exhaust with every single one of these gear changes I'm actually a little bit lost for words because this is seriously, seriously quick. Uh, I'm having to fully concentrate on what I'm doing here because the car is piling on speed like you would not believe. It is actually almost too quick for a small car like this. <laughs> I cannot believe it. What I'm not liking though is how firm this suspension is in Sport Plus mode. It's kind of skipping across the road as we pile into some of these corners. On a super smooth racetrack it might be okay, but out here it's scaring the out of me. Let's get a little bit nerdy here for a second with regards to the rear end. It's quite special in this car because gone is the 50-50 setup. The old AMG A45 used to have the ability to send up to 50% of torque to the rear, so it predominantly felt like a front wheel drive car. This on the other hand can send up to 100% of torque to the rear. And then on the two rear wheels on the rear axle, you have multi-plate clutches that can then further distribute up to 100% of the torque that's going to the back to each wheel. That allows you to do drift mode. Now I'm not allowed to do that today, but here is some vision of drift mode in action. And that all happens due to that clever mechanical torque vectoring system. So it is a clever setup and also is aided by the fact that it has a limited slip differential. What a day, it's, um, you can't see this on the camera right now, but it's almost pitch black. We have been at it all day long, which is why some of this video is gonna be jumbled around a bit. So, A45 AMG. I had a cracking time driving it through the corners, but it felt a little bit unhinged, and that's just because it's so fast, and it is quite firm in that Sport Plus mode. But it sort of got me thinking, it doesn't really have that emotion. You know, it doesn't have that connection that you kind of want to have with a car like this. And then I thought, well, for this kind of money, what else are you getting? It, it is competing in a much higher price bracket. And two cars that I bought that are pretty much the same money and in the same performance, like the Toyota Supra and the Tesla Model 3 Performance. Then I asked myself, would I buy those again or would I get this? And I kind of would just get those. The Supra is not as quick in a straight line, but I feel more engaged when driving it. And the Tesla's there for all that straight line fast stuff. So this is like a modern age supercar, but by making it as fast as they have, they've kind of taken away a bit of that soul out of it. So it is a little bit disappointing and 
I just wish I could get a little bit more out of it. But anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe, followed by the bell icon, because that's gonna tell you every single time we drive something different. We've had a seriously long day, so we're gonna hit the road. There's still another two hour drive ahead of us.